as you all know, uh, we have many beautiful sponsors that are helping us in this journey for this coffee break. Yes. And uh, one one of our sponsors, you can see, is St. James Coffee. St. James Coffee. Shout out. Yes. They're, they're <laughs> wonderful, wonderful mission. Their mission is to have a coffee house where one can share their faith. There's also a chapel within the coffee house. Mm -hmm. It's a very welcoming area. It puts into effect what the whole evangelization is all about. And so they mm -hmm. offer you, us, um, beautiful coffee. There's a lot of different materials of coffee, but also tea too as well. So if you're ever hungering for some good coffee, mm -hmm. good fellowship, please stop and by by St. James. All right, welcome back to another episode of Coffee Break. Welcome back. Ooh. We're joined with the lovely Abby again. Again, she she didn't leave. Part two. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Um, so of course, Father Tay. We have Eli here as the co-host, and today's topic is how does one live a Catholic life amidst a society that doesn't want God? Right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I was gonna go for pagan world, but the ladies are like, no, Father, that's too harsh. <laughs> um, like, yeah, we anyways. can't we can't call out the truth just yet. <laughs> we're gonna ease into it. And, uh, Slowly evangelize. Yeah, yeah. So we thought we we thought it'd be a good idea just to kind of uh, feel some questions, you know, about like how and probably some of these questions you probably yourself are asking, right? And then uh, um, probably get some input myself a couple of others here and on, on, on what they think what makes it difficult and how we can become better catholics in the world so mm -hmm. whoever has the questions fire away sure you want to go first you can go first if you want okay um so a lot of us realize that we have kind of like two separate worlds that we live in where we're either too catholic or we're not catholic enough and there's no like in between stage Mm -hmm. And I think that's where the Lord is calling us to be, but we don't know how to get there. So what is your opinion on, you know, those two separate worlds and how do we merge them together? Yeah. <clears throat> Another good way to kind of redefine that question, which is a beautiful question, is mm -hmm. when we say too Catholic, that means like people who are on fire for Jesus, right? Mm -hmm. And they want to evangelize, but no one else is kind of wanting to bite at the invitation. So we'll, so it's very easy for those on fire for, Catholic, uh, on fire for Jesus Catholics to be like, well, I, well, I ain't gonna waste my time. I'm just gonna be with people who, who are gonna build me up, who are gonna challenge you, who are going to grow. <clears throat> That's a beautiful thing, because you need that. Psalm 42 talks about like, you know, sorry, not Psalm 42, but uh, another Psalm talks about iron sharpens upon iron, right? You need those good people in your life. But the issue is that we start to remain within our cliques, like only only those who agree with us or those who are practicing our faith. Mm -hmm. So we we lose the sight of to to evangelize, right? And then there there are others who just want to do the bare minimum or for various reasons. They feel that they're unworthy. It's hard for them to get into their faith. That they, they've never been taught until they're like, I want to do more, but I just don't know how, right? I'm gonna say one quick answer, which is very. A loaded question, but at the same time, it's prayer. What is your relationship with Jesus like? Be honest. Because if your relationship with Jesus is strong, he will always, always challenge you. You can't give me, if you're praying every day, and you're going to Mass every day, and you're going to confession this once a month, you cannot tell me that Jesus hasn't been challenging you, right? Right? That's how you find your balance because Jesus will say, well, you spend a lot of time. Like, for example, like I love the Newman Centers, right? <laughs> it's been very easy for me a priest to be like, you know what? <clears throat> it's a hard day at the parish. I'm just going to jump over to the Newman Center because these kids are on fire. This is awesome. It brings me life. And then like, forget about my people here. Well, so you can, no, you can't do that, right? That's, a, that's part of our us as Catholics. It's like, okay, so how do I bring others to Christ even if, even if it's just like one, one by one thing, you know? Mm -hmm. Because when we pray, we fall in love with Jesus. He will always ask us, do you trust me? And then from that invitation, I say, yes, of course. So as we grow in our faith, he heals us. He gives us different tools. And then he says, are you ready then to go out and to make the invitation? Right? That's how we become better Catholics. Do we listen to the voice of Jesus? Because if we don't have a relationship with Jesus, we'll, we will never move from, I'm trying to do the bare minimum. Because there's no need. God hasn't talked to me, so there's no need until you have a good relationship. If you ask me a question, you're like, I feel very uncomfortable. <laughs> I've never been asked this before, right? right? But Jesus says, I love you, and that's why I want you to give more of yourself. So that's my, my answer. 
when you fall in love with Jesus, he's not afraid to challenge you, but whenever he challenges you, uh, it's never more than you can handle. So he'll, he'll show you the way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Any other thoughts somewhere? I guess maybe kind of more in a practical sense, especially for young adults. Yeah. Um, I find that from my personal experience, it's so easy when you're in like a very tight knit Catholic community, such as what you mentioned at a Newman Center mm -hmm. yes. or like if you're at like a religious institution, like the campus ministry office, or yeah. if you're at like maybe a Catholic high school and mm -hmm. you have like that even seminary. Ministry. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you would probably have much more experience with that. Um, <laughs> sure, sure. Just kind of the easiness to stay in what is comfortable yes. mm -hmm. and yes. to be very inward focused in that tight knit close community yeah. and not yeah. necessarily always take the time to reach out outside of that. Mm -hmm. um, but then there's also the extreme where you um, maybe are too outward focused All on right. like evangelizing but don't have that touchstone yep what advice maybe would you have for young adults who are trying to find oh, the balance the balance it. between mm -hmm. yeah. being connected with other catholics but not being so close in that mm. it's hard for maybe other people to be involved or you just are so focused on that that you yeah. forget to look outwards mm -hmm. that's awesome prayer number one i think is prayer excuse me because with prayer god will let you know like, for example, like, and you start feeling it. Like, for those who are just all about mission, this sounds really bad, but I'm going to say it, right? Because I've seen it with them <laughs> in my family. They can never sit still. Even though they're praying, I, I, I wonder, I'm like, are you really asking God the right questions? Because it seems like as soon as we talk to them, like, hey, <clears throat> it's great that you have this charism to really serve, but what has God asked of you? They're very quick to, like, answer and justify. You're like, mm, I don't think you've asked God question so number one thing is prayer and ask God the question God what do you want of me am I doing too much and he, he will let you know you know you're doing way too much is when you keep avoiding that question right you don't spend so much time in prayer you're just out and about you know you're way too much bring it back so spend some solid time in prayer to surrender and then God will show you the way um, the, other, the other part too is <clears throat> is when you is when you've been praying a lot, but you're so scared to move out of your friend zone and to be comfortable, right? You'll feel it too, because you feel very irritated. You're just restless, right? So this is the different restless, because the people who are doing way too much, they have restless feet. But when you're not doing enough, you have this sloth and kind of sluggishness. Like you know you should do more, but you're afraid to kind of jump it, right? Mm -hmm. And so make a, make a small goal for yourself like for those who are sluggish and who are very slow say okay i'm at a college campus i'll talk to at least one person i'll sit with one person different every day introduce myself and go on sounds silly but like when i was in the seminary we, we wouldn't move past the table or seminary and say i'm like dude i can't i can't do this i signed up for uh for, to play intramural sports i did other stuff on campus and so i'm constant contact with different people and i sat mm -hmm. with different people each day at lunch, right? Just make a small goal. But the more you talk to different people and share your story, the more that you, you'll find yourself being lifted up because you're like, oh, this is awesome. This is what Jesus means when says. So I'm not going way off too far. I'm just within the confines of my, of my home, but yet I'm still pushing myself out there. Mm -hmm. So hopefully that helps, yeah. Mm -hmm. I think another good point is, you know, when you push yourself to be out in that public sphere and away from you know, your comfort zone. Our bishop even says, you know, you have to be comfortable being around sinners. Mm -hmm. You know, that doesn't mean we go off and we say, you know, I love that you're sinning. That's amazing. Thank you for, you know, damaging your soul. <laughs> you know, that's yeah, no not, one, no one says that. That's yeah. not exactly what we're saying. That's not even close. Um, you know, he's just saying, you know, you need to be comfortable being with them and you need to leave your little bubble that you are comfortable in you need to go out you need to evangelize and you need mm -hmm. to be able to meet those people where they're at mm -hmm. so then you can bring them in mm -hmm. and you know fully love them and show oh. them you know this is the way to do things we're not saying that we're better than you mm -hmm. it's just showing you another option of how to live and to be more virtuous and i think that goes in line a lot with our last topic, the Holy Friendships one. <laughs> mm -hmm.
it's a pullback turn because it, it really helps to I think mm -hmm. the, the, the biggest grace is do you have holy friends because they're they'll help you they'll be like hey we just noticed you've been kind of like isolating yourself lately mm -hmm. how can we help right, mm -hmm. right. Correct. you know going between the you know we're too catholic we're not catholic enough um you know for myself as a youth minister and you know wanting to bring kids into the church and show them you know the love of christ and you know show them that you know the church is fun and we're able to you know do all these great things what is a way to like evangelize to not only youth but like our peers and other adults even without coming off as like crazy jesus freaks <laughs> Ooh, good question the, well, the first thing that I wish I have a disclaimer is that to evangelize to other people is you're not going to please everyone, right? Mm -hmm. Some of us who have gifts that will appeal to athletes, some of us who have gifts that will appeal to certain cultures, right? That's just the way it is. God's created us all with different gifts. Um, but it's going back to our last video, can you listen well? To evangelize is to listen. So often we think about evangelizers going, up, going on the offensive. Like we're at war, we're going to come up with these different reasons why you should become Catholic, and we're ready to fight. Like as soon as they say something, well, I was raised Lutheran. This is why I don't. This is why I don't like about Catholic. Like, Let me prove you wrong, right? Versus um, evangelization is asking the bigger question: Like why aren't you pleased? Why aren't you happy? Why are you not satisfied? Right? Because we're living in a world where they know this. They should have God. But by having God, I like what Jordan Peterson says, right? Uh, this psychologist, he knows he needs God, but he says, if if I become Christian or if I become Catholic, that means I have to change. And he was mm -hmm. afraid of that, right? Because like if you've been set your life, your whole your whole mindset, your whole lifestyle to defend your lifestyle, like I don't believe in God, right? <clears throat> Well, all of a sudden, you have this encounter with Jesus. You're like, now what do I do? 27 years old, right? Going to grad school or whatever. You feel like you have to reinvent yourself, right? Versus Jesus says, no, I just, I'll, I'll do the work, right? Come with me and, and we can help you with that. And so you have to learn to listen well to other people too, right? Like right now, the world needs the middle ground, right? What do I mean by middle ground? Going straight to a priest and church is the last thing in people's mind. Versus, I can go hang out and get a pizza with a couple guys from my parish, and we'll, we'll just talk surface level, right? And grab a couple beers, surface level stuff. But then as the surface level stuff, then we move past it. We start talking about graces. We talk, talk about challenges in, in, in today's life. And how do we make sense of all of that? You're doing evangelization. You're helping people to ask the question, where is God, right? They don't realize that yet, but because you <laughs> keep opening the doors, we keep inviting, we keep talking to people about that. I think that's what it's going to it's, it's going to help because people feel like their voices aren't heard right now, which is another box for another day. Because we're living in a world where we have to redefine everything. You know, I hate saying this, but the liberals have kind of hijacked a lot of our words and just re rearranged it. Like for example, when I say like my voice isn't heard. In today's world, it says, my voice is heard because you've not endorsed, accepted 100% of what I'm all about. I can love you, but as a good parent, there are, there are behaviors that we have to correct. I'm not going to endorse that type of behavior, right? Okay. And so how does that all fit in, right? And so I say to evangelize well is to learn to listen. This person is ready for God, but just not in front of a whole group. Okay, sweet. Let's grab coffee sometime, right? right? So like, you have to make these mental notes of like, oh, this guy does well. When we play sports, because then he would start talking. Like I had a <clears throat> guy in college, he would talk only about life stuff after soccer. That's the way he is, right? He would never talk about before soccer, but it was always after soccer. Because after we we're done playing soccer, we'll walk around for hours and we'll just talk and have a bonfire. That's where he was the most comfortable, right? Mm -hmm. And so evangelization is that, do you know that person well to, to make the invitation? Yeah, any thoughts? Yeah, yeah kind of going off of our last video, um, about holy friendships well so I think with what father was getting at too it's always important to listen and ask questions yes and yes asking questions yes. is huge because yep. I know from my personal experience there are times where the more I've asked them questions the more I can get at the root of it yes and 
it's very easy mm -hmm. for the human mind with the way we're wired to just make assumptions or yes. draw conclusions. Mm -hmm. So the more we ask questions, the more we can get to what really they're getting at. Mm -hmm. Just like if you maybe go get help for your, like from a doctor or a therapist for you physically or men kind of in a cognitive sense and they ask you questions to find out, we have to do the same thing spiritually. We have mm -hmm. to ask questions and find out, oh, like what do you think about this? Why do you think this? Mm -hmm. Is the, like and just like get to it to mm -hmm. help you be able to grow with them more. And uh, you guys have probably seen it too in, our, in today's world where we have those good friendships. What happens? <clears throat> that trust begins to develop. Right? And so evangelization is really about uh, allowing people trust in you people, but allowing them to find Christ through your words, through your actions, through through your deeds. Mm -hmm. You know, and don't be afraid to even talk with people too. Like right now, I have some preachers, they're awesome. They're like all grandmas and grandpas. No, <laughs> not all of them. But I had this particular guy, he's awesome. He's been going around and cha you know, challenging me. He's like, hey, how can I pray for you today? Oh, I haven't seen you at Mass. You know, like, how can I help you, right? So just different things, mm -hmm. you know, that you can make it <clears throat> about G inviting Jesus into the everyday life too, um, as well. But once more, in order to evangelize, but you have to go back to what we talk about rim. What is your relationship with God like? Mm -hmm. Do you know that do you know your identity is rooted in Jesus? And do you know that your mission stems from those two things? Because you can't evangelize, you can't give away what you don't have. Mm -hmm. So we always have to go back to the basics. If we know that we're loved by Jesus and we start talking about Jesus to our friendships, that will that will come. And so don't force it, just continue to pray and, and have an open heart and mind. You know, I remember going off to uh, Detroit <clears throat> and we had to, um, we set up a table in Wayne State University, huge college campus. <clears throat> we walk around asking people, hey, with groceries, can I pray for you today? And one of my best buddies, I loved it. He's like, this feels worse. He's like, I've never been rejected so much. <laughs> and uh, it's just worse than asking a girl, I asked a girl going to high school prom, I started laughing. Oh no. Because that's what slows us down to evangelize. We we're so afraid to of the rejection. Mm -hmm. But if you think about what does Jesus keep telling his apostles? They're not rejecting you. They're rejecting the one who sent you. If mm -hmm. they reject me, they reject the one who sent me. So ultimately who are they rejecting? They're rejecting God. So the pressure's off of you, like, hey, I ain't gonna be here to please nobody. I said, right? I'm here to to do what God has ha has asked of me. And so we mm -hmm. just encourage you to to live a life for, for God, because it's worth it. And scripture says, if you can bring one soul back to God, it erases a multitude of sins. But at the same time, it's almost like, why wouldn't you want people to come back to God, right? <laughs> yeah, I think there was one of the apostles, I think he was stationed somewhere for like 12 years or so, and he preached to like hundreds of thousands of people. He converted maybe like five. Mm -hmm. and the, you know, it's not about numbers. It's not about gaining the most people in your life to, mm -hmm. you know, come follow Jesus because you know it's going to be the best thing ever. It's not about that. It's about reaching those people and finding out how to make those connections and how to, you know, really, you know, learn the inner workings of their heart and um, just mm -hmm. lead them to that life of Christ. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Hopefully this has been helpful for you guys. And so don't be afraid to live for Jesus, but also to preach his word. And so until next time, we'll see you guys. See you later.